So you know the Twitter account old takes exposed. This is basically going to be me in today's video exposing my old self. I'm going to be reacting to my 2022 NBA draft grades right after the NBA draft happened. And as I was going to press play on this video, I give a take about the Knicks draft since they didn't end up drafting anyone. And let's just listen to what I have to say. At one point, you saw my funny reactions to the Knicks trades. So yeah, they will not be getting a grade here because I'll be giving every team that made a selection, but I give them an F. <laughs> Only because they managed to have to give up one first round pick to get off of Kemba Walker's contract or four seconds, however you look at it. Especially if it's to sign Jalen Brunson, which is a big no-no in my opinion. I mean, if you watch the stream, you know why. But yeah, I'm going to be going... <laughs> Yep, I was I was very skeptical about the Knicks going out and signing Jalen Brunson, and I couldn't look any more wrong. My thought was basically... I don't think Julius Randle was a one or a two on a really good team. And I think adding Jalen Brunson was going to kind of plateau the Knicks and maybe maybe just like have them be around the six, seven, eight, nine, ten seed. Like in that tier of teams, maybe where the Bulls, the Raptors, you can even say the Heat are now, or the Hawks as well. And they were just going to be kind of stuck in purgatory, which I was scared for. I thought it could be a waste of three to four seasons with this team and it wouldn't gel properly and maybe the defense would suffer. Oh, no, I look like the biggest idiot and I am so happy. I have not had more fun watching Jalen Brunson. I've not had more fun watching the Knicks in my career. Like right now, like currently watching the Knicks, I'm about to buy a Jalen Brunson jersey. I have to. If I was ever going to be 1,000% wrong on a take, I'm so glad it's on a take Do involving all my Knicks. Picks giving all right, so let's see what I have to say about each one of these picks, and we'll go back into it just about a year ago. This video came out nine months ago, ten months ago. The video. So with the number one overall pick in the draft, I have the Orlando Magic getting a B plus. Yes, the number one overall pick isn't an A. Paolo Bancaro is my fourth ranked player in this draft class, and that's why it's a B plus. He's a fantastic player. I think he can win rookie of the year. I also predicted that he's going to score the most in the rookie season out of every other rookie. I just would have went Chet Holmgren, and if not Chet Holmgren, Jabari Smith Jr. That's why it gets a B plus. Okay, so I was right, I guess, saying that he's going to win rookie of the year. He's going to score the most points. I mean, that wasn't like a crazy take. I was higher on, like, Chet was my number one player. Uh, just because of the defensive potential, I thought. Um, and there was some concerns about Powell coming out of Duke. And I was very wrong on him. Yeah, like I said, I'm exposing myself here. I was a little bit higher on Jabari Smith. Now, to give Jabari the benefit of the doubt, he inherited like the worst situation in the league in Houston. But... Paolo, you'd rather take 1,000%. I'm completely wrong. And I had Jaden Ivey ahead of him as well. Ivey's been a fine rookie as well, but yeah, nah, I'm looking like a dumbass for having Paolo Bancaro, who could be like a generational talent as my fourth best player in this class. That's why I'm not a GM. Holmgren at number two for the OKC Thunder. It's actually going to be an A+. Plus. Yeah, I was going to make it an A, but you're getting my number one player in the draft at number two. That's really good. I think he's going to have the best career out of anybody in this class, and that's why it's getting an A+. Plus. Jamari Smith Jr. at three is going to be an A for me. We all thought he was going to be going number one overall to the Magic. On the day of the draft, it goes, whoa, it's Paulo Bancaro. There's at one point where he was like plus 700 odds to go number one yesterday. And he ended up going number one. But getting Jabari Smith at three, I think I actually like Jabari Smith in Houston better than Paul Bancaro. He is my second best player in this class. You got him at three. That deserves an A. At number four, we have the Sacramento Kings selecting Keegan Murray. That is a B from me. And I love Keegan Murray. Don't get me wrong. And apparently there were some reports that Jaden Ivey like, didn't really want to play for Sacramento. I just have like Ivy so much higher than Murray when it comes to talent level. And maybe just even think about trading down and acquiring more talent to try to make a playoff run next year could have been a better option. But either way, I'm still excited to see him at Sabonis in that front court. At number five, this is going to be another A plus for me. It is Jaden Ivy to the Detroit Pistons, and that's an A plus. Yeah, he is my third ranked player in the draft. You got him at five, and I've been salivating over it for so long. I've been mentioning it in mock drafts like the Jaden Ivy, Kate Cunningham backcourt would be just so much fun to watch, and I can't believe we're going to get it next year. Benedict Matherin to the Pacers at six is going to get a B plus. They could have gone in maybe some different options here if they like Shaden Sharp, possibly Dyson Daniels, but I really like Matherin. This was the, the selection I would have made if I were here. Between him and Sharp, but B plus, it's a pretty good pick. I'm excited to see Benedict in Indiana. Any, like, terrible takes outside of the Paolo one? Um, maybe saying, like, yeah, uh, I'd rather have Jabari in Houston than Paolo. Not great. Um, I didn't bash the Murray pick at all either. I got why the Kings wanted to draft him. And, yeah, maybe there was the whole Ivy thing that he didn't want to go to Sacramento. So, I don't think I hurt myself too much. But maybe the damage is already done after the Paolo takes. For seven, Shaden Sharp to the Blazers. It's actually an A-. minus Now, do the Blazers need another guard? Not really. You have Simon to Dame. You could use more wings there. But this might be a top three talented player in this class. You're getting him at seven. You need to improve your bench, especially on the offensive side. 
So you go out and get Shaden Sharp. Yes. Okay, that's a pretty good take. And I think, like, for the Blazers, a team, I mean, it didn't really help them this year. Like, you needed to take somebody that had a super high ceiling, even if it was a super low floor. You need to take one of those boomer bust prospects, and it's looking like Sharp is going to be towards that boom because you just can't stay stagnant with this current roster. I mean, we'll see what they do with Dame in the offseason, but the Blazers getting Sharp, I, I like that originally, and um, Sharp played well down the stretch at the end of his rookie season. Mason Daniels for the Pelicans at 8 is a B-plus for me. I'm only just worried about his playing time next year with Jose Alvarado, with McCollum playing some point guard here and there, and Devontae Graham. I hope he gets a lot of run. I love this player in this class. He's going to be a good scorer. Um, at the rim, we'll see how his shooting can go. He's going to be a great passer, good rebounder. I think he's going to really try on defense this year, and he can be really good for a Pelicans team that desperately needs more defenders, and that's why he gets a B-plus for me. Number 9. I mean, season. Daniels has had probably one of the worst rookie seasons out of the um, – out of the top 10, but uh, the potential is still there. Antonio Spurs, they took Jeremy Sohan. This is a B. Now, I love Jeremy Sohan in the strip. He's never going to be an all-star, in my opinion, but he's going to be those guys, maybe not like Jermon Green. It's hard, it's unfair to compare him to him, but just like one of those like important role players on a championship team. Like players like Grant Williams and Marcus Smart for the Celtics this year. Probably never be all-stars, but you need guys like that, and that's what I think Sohan can be. Maybe just a little bit high at nine for San Antonio, especially for where they are in their timeline. But don't worry, they'll pick later on that get better grades. Johnny Davis to the I think that's Wizards. a pretty good take as well. I I remember liking Johnny Davis a lot. Here's at ten. That's a B plus for me because I'm just not sure what they're doing in the backcourt. Are they moving Beal to the point guard position? Are they going to be going after a point guard in free agency? I would have liked to see them maybe get a little bit aggressive and maybe moved up to get Dyson Daniels. Would have cost it a lot. Uh, but yeah, I'm just interested about the fit with Davis and Beal back there. Number 11, we had the New York Knicks, they ended up trading the pick, to the OKC Thunder, and I'm going to give this a B minus. Now, I do like Usman Jang. I think he projected a very good defender in this league with his size and frame, but it is going to take some time, but that's the perfect scenario in OKC. Nobody's rushing you. As just giving up three first-round picks, was that worth it? And he and did show some promise this season, but maybe it's not the timeline. Like, OKC is going to want to make the full-on playoffs next year, and we'll see if he's going to be able to get a decent amount of playing time. Um, I'm scared to see what I gave Jalen Williams because I don't think it was a great Jalen grade. Williams at 12 is going to get a B for me. Now, I do oh. like Jalen Williams more than Zhang, at least. Okay, okay. I'm kind of glad that I, I don't know why I remember giving him a C. Okay, <laughs> I'll take that at this current moment but same thing like I don't know if it's like they thought some team was going to take Jalen Williams or, or the Knicks or some team was going to trade up was going to take Usman Jang and they're like all right we got to give up three first round picks for one of these guys I just thought that was a little bit steep and that's why uh Williams gets a B and Jang gets a B minus yeah so I was kind of also grading the picks themselves but who would have thought that Williams was going to be a top three rookie this year Jalen Duran going to the Detroit Pistons at 13 this was originally the Hornets pick this is going to be an A. Yeah, I love Jalen Duran. It's a weird fit in Detroit with him and Isaiah Stewart. I don't know who's going to be the long-term five. I'd assume it's going to be Jalen Duran. Now we added, uh, we, I, this was before they signed Marvin Bagley, and now they've added James Wiseman to that as well. And rolls with Duran, Cade, and Ivy are just going to be so much fun to watch. They're going to be like a top league best team next year. At 14, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers. I was wrong. <laughs> they were not a top league best team this year. Baji. It's an A minus for me. This is the guy I wanted them to take. They needed a ready NBA score to come off the bench, and O'Shea's their guy. 15, we have the Charlotte Hornets taking Mark Williams. This is a B plus. I love Mark Williams in this draft. I just thought it was interesting to see them trade away pick 13 for like a future Denver first round pick, and you get a bunch of seconds. Um, and taking, I guess, or choosing Mark Williams over Jalen Duran, I don't know if I would do that, but either way, I'm happy. I still don't think I will do that, but it's looking a little bit less like bad for the Hornets because Williams did have a nice second half. Charlotte ended up going with a big. And when at 16 taking A.J. Griffin, this is an A- minus for me. I thought he was going to go in the top 10 at some point. I mocked him 11 to the Knicks. Surprised he didn't go in the lottery. Steal for the Hawks at 16. We have I also want to see more playing time from Griffin next year. Another A pick here, and that's Tari Eason to the Rockets at 17. I just love Tari Eason. I think at 17 is incredible value. We'll see what they do kind of in that front court because they have Jabari Smith Jr. now. They have Alperun Shangu, and they also have Usman Garuba. Like, we'll see where Jay Sean Tate's going to be playing. Now Eason, but I, I love Eason either way. 18, we have the Chicago Bulls taking Dale and Terry. It's a B. I like Terry a lot. I think there were some other players on the board that I would have preferred in Chicago. And if Tari Eason would the pick prior, who I would have loved there, 
Maybe just trade up a little bit. That would have been nice to see Eason in Chicago. Jay Waravia to the Timberwolves at 19. This is a C plus. I like Waravia, and I thought he was going to be a late first round pick, but giving up like 22 and 29 to go up and get Loravia from Memphis was a little interesting. At 20, we have the San Antonio Spurs taking Malachi Branham. This is an A plus. Yes, I think Branham could have been like a stinky lottery pick. He obviously didn't go there. And I mentioned this before. If there was a, like a Donovan Mitchell from 2017 in this year's class, It'd be Malachi Branham. Okay, that's a lot of praise for Branham. We'll see how he plays in the second year. He did show the scoring potential in San Antonio. Hopefully he doesn't lose playing time next year. The Spurs are going to be adding another top five pick. Um, they're going to have a decent amount of cap space, but I'm excited for Branham's year too. Brown going to the Nuggets at 21 is a B plus for me. He played super well in the tournament, was one of the draft's biggest risers, and I'm excited to see him in Denver. There were some other players I would prefer with that team, but I like seeing Brown go there. It also treat us to something else, if you know what I mean. At 22, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves taking Walker Kessler. This is a C plus. Uh, I don't really know what they're doing with Nas Reed now. Like, obviously, at the power forward spot, you got Jared Vanderbilt and Jaden McDaniels. I just didn't know if they should go for another kind of backup center option. Maybe Nas Reed isn't on the team next year. We'll see. At okay, so this is obviously the before the Gobert trade. Um, and it wasn't me bashing Walker Kessler at all. It's just like the uh, Timberwolves philosophy. Helped them get, uh, I guess, Gobert, but... It's just funny looking back on that. Like what like the little I knew what was gonna happen in the next two months, um, or even the next year, with Gobert getting traded in Minnesota, with Kessler being in that deal, and Kessler arguably having a better season as a rookie than Gobert this year. Memphis Grizzlies trading Anthony Melton to the 76ers. Love that trade for Philly, by the way. For David Roddy out of Colorado State, this is a C minus. This is somebody that I thought they could have just kind of 29 originally and kept Anthony Melton, who's a good bench player for you. At 24, we have the Milwaukee Bucks taking Marjan Beauchamp. This is a B. Uh, he's a little raw as a prospect, but he's older in age, though. I just feel like Milwaukee had to hit on this pick as a bench scorer, but I like Bo Champ over some other guys that they could have taken here. Blake Wesley to the Spurs at 25. Uh, this is an A. Blake Wesley is one of my favorite players in this class, and getting him at 25 along with Malachi Brandon before, I just love that from the Spurs. It's funny because I loved their picks at 20 and 25 more than I like the pick at 9. When uh, yeah, I'm kind of worried about Wesley's playing time next year. We'll see how it goes. If his, I feel like his usage is going to drop. No more at pick 26. This is technically going to Minnesota. I'm going to be giving this a B. Wendell Moore is like a couple of these other guys, like Christian Brown, like Oshie Baji. He's NBA ready. And maybe he can eat at those Malik Beasley minutes next year. Nicole yeah, I mean, Wendell Moore definitely had a forgettable rookie season. Jovic going to the Miami Heat at 27. Now, I like Jovic as a prospect, but to Miami, I'm giving this a B minus. I'm just kind of intrigued on how he's going to fit their style of play. I would have preferred maybe a wing score off the bench, like uh, looking at possibly a Jaden Hardy or who I mocked, Bryce McGowan. At 28. Okay, yeah. Uh, not not terrible assessment looking back on this a year later. He did have some injuries, though. Wait, the Golden State Warriors taking Patrick Baldwin. Remember before the draft, like Patrick Baldwin Jr. was like supposed to be a top 10 pick and he just sucked at Milwaukee. Jr. I'm giving this a B. Now, I don't really love Baldwin at all because he played really bad at Milwaukee last year. He's really drafted based on his potential. And Golden State was a weird fit because are they really going to develop him um, at the NBA level? Or is he going to be a big G League player next year? We'll see. Yeah, that's why it's getting that great for me. Ty Ty Washington technically going to the Rockets at 29. This is an A-. minus. I love Ty Ty in the strip. I thought he could have been a sneaky lottery pick, and they got him at 20. Well, there's a reason. There was like Sharif Cooper back in 2021 who went in the second round. We thought he was going to be a first-round pick. Washington here didn't have a great rookie season, Nine. and there's probably a reason why he went 29 and not in the lottery like I mentioned. Big fan of that. And at 30, we have the Denver Nuggets selecting Peyton Watson at UCLA. This is going to get one of my worst grades. It's going to be a D plus. Uh, if you look up Peyton Watson's stats last year, they weren't great. I really thought he should have stayed another year at UCLA because he didn't get a lot of run last year. But hey, he must have killed the combine. He must have killed the workout with the Nuggets. I just thought it was not a great pick. So yeah, that is me. Okay, so uh, for Peyton Watson, basically, yeah, the potential is there, I guess. And maybe with the NIL, like he could have gotten maybe a decent amount of money at UCLA if he stayed. But he ended up getting a first round pick. So you're guaranteed at least two years of that rookie contract. But he didn't do much his rookie season. And yeah, those are me reacting to my NBA draft grades. Let me know how maybe your mindset has changed on these players basically since the draft happened nine months ago. My biggest L is definitely mentioning that Paolo Bancaro was my fourth rated player in this draft. I was happy that I, I like Jalen Williams a little bit more coming out of this class. I was also high on Dyson Daniels, which I'm definitely wrong about. I was high on Blake Wesley. And I wish I was a little bit more, you know, edgy. And I gave like Dale and Terry, like if I didn't like him, I, I gave him a B. Like I should have gave him a C minus or something like that. Or I should give Oravio or Roddy even worse grade. I think I'm going to be edgy in my draft grades this year. So yeah, thank you for watching. I love you guys. Shout out like if you did enjoy, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.